Hello, everybody. The new year has arrived, uh, and hopefully it will be better than the old one. And we are starting with Women Matters today. And we are our team of international people. And I think as there are some people among us who don't know the other ones yet, uh, we could do a bigger introduction to ourselves, a bigger check in, not just how I feel today, but also where you are, how you uh, see this group meetings and what you are doing in your life and things, what you want to share so that we get to know each other better. Okay, Monia, you are always the first one, I think. <laughs> So you start and then give over to the next one. I'm always the first one because I like to have a lot of time to check in because sometimes it doesn't work. I'm, as I put into my name tag, I'm in, living in Vienna. It's rather windy and getting a little chillier, but it was rather warm. And as I told Christine before, I ever since the new year started, I feel sort of grumpy, but it may still be in connection with the tooth I got pulled on the 23rd and the antibiotics I had to take. And yeah, and I have to get a new way of biting. <laughs> um, and chewing. Yeah, everything is fine so far. We had a lovely, uh, invitation by our grandchildren, all three of them as a gift uh, on the 2nd of January and uh, at a very nice restaurant in our district. And I got X Benedict and I love them. So whoever doesn't know X Benedict, try them once if they are just delicious. So actually I should feel good, but as I told Christine, I feel grumpy. And I'm um, looking at this new year rather hesitantly, but we'll see how it turns out. I turn over to Christine. She was the second one. Me? Which, which Christine? Christine King, you, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I guess a little bit more about me because some of you don't know who I am. Um, I sure what I want to say. Um, I'm just, I'm quite content in my world. I've been a university professor for many years at the graduate level, master's and doctoral level, and left that work to just do Enneagram work full time. And I just having such a good time. It's like the sandbox, the sandbox of toys that I get to throw around up in the air and see where they land. And I never know where it's going to go. So that it's just great fun. And um, I have clients, you know, in different parts of the world, but and also really right locally where I live. So I live outside of Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm looking out the window. It's really, really windy, uh, so much so that one of my precious, precious trees was not down last night. And if I get interrupted, it's because the person I've called to help its root ball is still established. So someone's going to come over and try and give her a chance to live so that's on the back of my mind i said don't come between 12 and 1 but you know for sure <laughs> it's very likely that's when the truck will show up so um yeah i've lived outside the united states for 20 25 years living in europe and asia so i feel very comfortable um, being in a group that lives far away i like that <laughs> It, it takes my heart where I want to go. So um, I get enough of my media culture. So I dive in here and get to feel the energies of others. And that's just so good for my soul. So uh, yeah, that, that's enough about me. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer, of course. Do you give over to somebody else? Yeah, who came in next? I think Christine, yeah? <laughs> Okay. Good morning, everybody. About your subject, you were a professor for. I beg your pardon. 
Really quickly. I I had to. Oh, you are breaking up. What kind of a prof? What so subjects you want... did you teach? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So my doctorate is in counseling and um, psychology, but I didn't want to spend my life being with people who were unhappy. So I used it for in global organizations to with team building. So with a lot of experience of that, when I came back to the States, um, an opening in a university was for somebody with just my background. The name of the program was Organizational Learning and Leadership. So working with training in organizations, using things like the Myers-Briggs and now, of course, the Enneagram. So that's what, that's what does that kind of give you a description of it? Perfect. Good. Thanks. Okay, so um, you can refer to me as Christine West, so, since we are on opposite coasts. Okay. Can... <laughs> West. Okay. Christine West. Um, <laughs> uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, yes, hopefully 2022 will be uh, a healthier year for everyone and, and a good year where we can move around a little bit more. Um, I've missed being with you. It feels like a long time. I guess it's been at least a month. Um, so I have missed it and, and glad to be back. Uh, my goals for 2022. Um, oh, by the way, I'm in Carlsbad, California. So I'm just up the road from uh, San Diego. Um, my goals for 2022 are to work less. <clears throat> and so I have uh, X'd out time in my weekly schedule. And uh, the hard part will be sticking to that. Um, I'm a, psycho a clinical psychologist and I get calls almost daily, <clears throat> really high need for mental health services, as you can imagine. So it's hard to say no to people. Um, so I'm hopeful that I will keep to my pared down schedule. Um, I've got two more years on an office lease, and so I'm I'm not going to do anything very abrupt. But it, it's been weird. It, it feels like in this day and age, spending time with clients is the easy part, <laughs> and having to respond to emails and insurance inquiries and paperwork and just all the the non fun stuff of uh, business just takes more and more time. It's just incredible how much time uh, all of that takes, as I'm sure all of you know by being on email that uh, it can you can spend hours responding to people. Um, so uh, what else? Um, I'd like to get back into more spiritual reading um, and meditate more consistently. I was pretty good over the course of December. I think something about Advent kind of kept me in a meditating mode, but then I stopped. So I would like to resume that and do a little bit more uh, spirituality. But again, maybe that's one of the things I'll do with hopefully my increased time away from work. And, um, you know, the usual goals to stay healthy. Uh, Tom had surgery in mid-December on his knee, and he's doing really well. Um, he's actually driving, and he's got a, a clutch in his car, so he's actually pushing the clutch with his bad knee, um, and he's walking up and down the stairs one at a time, which is a, another big milestone for him. So he's doing well, and he's been very sweet, um, very appreciative of my help. Uh, so that's been nice. It's, it's actually been a nice way of us uh, connecting. So grateful for that. Grateful that he's come through well. And I will turn it over to Hanalee. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I'm in Johannesburg at the moment. Um, and it seems like I will be able to travel to your parts of the world, Heidi and Monia and Gertrude soon. <laughs> Maybe perhaps even in the next month, we'll see how it goes. So that was quite a surprise because the end of December, I was quite disturbed by everything was happening because of the travel bans against South Africa. So that's good news. Um, we started the new year in a really beautiful way. I actually already started on Christmas day. We decided to break the tradition, my daughter and I, 
So instead of going to family for Christmas lunch or something like that, we um, were cooking, we were baking dessert for an orphanage. And we also made Christmas packets for all the kids. And I'll tell you, we, it, was, it, it was a very long time ago that I baked in such a way for so many people. You can, my arms were so sore from, you know, from all the whipping of cream and stuff because we didn't have an electrical mixer at hand. And it was really, it was just something incredible to do when we get when to deliver these, these uh, for the kids. And they were babies and they were children and teenagers. And I still feel it from my old body. It was just pure joy to be with them. But also, it took me to a very deep place. And then yesterday, we started the year off with um, an extraordinary day. We went for a four and a half hour hike. Now, it's very hot in South Africa at the moment, in Johannesburg. We have lots of rain, so we have cold days, but very hard days as well. And because of COVID, the nature reserve where we wanted to go and do this hike with, with two quite a few mountains on it, um, we ended up walking in extreme hot back because of the time that we could enter this place. But it was extraordinary. So it was challenging, but it was also most beautiful. We, there's wildlife in the sanctuary. And um, yeah, it just was a beautiful way to be with nature. And then after that, we came home and at my daughter's house, we had the South African barbecue, a vegetarian one because we're both vegetarian. And it was her first one in her new place. So it was wonderful, us girls trying to do this thing by ourselves. And lots of fun. And then we ended with a pampering session, like a spa day. You know, for facial and panty pedicure, manicure, and just lying because we were so exhausted after this hike. But it was such a special day to just begin this year and to explore all the possibilities that's busy unfolding and whatever wants to emerge along the way that I'm so excited to be here with you because when I saw your faces, there was just something happening in my body again. Like, yes, these are my, these are my ladies, these are my girls. So thank you all. And thank you, Christine King. It's wonderful meeting you as well. I'm an adventurer. I think you could have perhaps guessed that because I'm a professional nomad. <laughs> and um, all of you, thank you so much. It's great to see you all. I'm really looking forward to this new season. And I'll pass over to Gertra. So can you hear me? Great. Yeah, I'm Gertraud from uh, Germany, north of Frankfurt. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I have had quite a hard time the last two, three, four months and it's over. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to have the possibility to just relax, have everything done I said I would do in 21. And I'm a consultant, uh, uh, yeah, coach, trainer, consultant in the field of appreciation, appreciative inquiry, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm approaching the Myers-Briggs. <laughs> so thank you for, for telling about that. Um, yeah, good news, good news. I will be a new grandmother in July. So our youngest one, and she she was, yeah, it was a Christmas present. <laughs> so she came with her boyfriend and uh, we had a good time. And it seems that our house will be sold. So it's really like opening up a new, new year of abundance and love and yeah. So, so the whole family is very excited, and uh, we'll see how it how it turns out. So that's that's my my wonderful good news. And I'm when you said uh, Monia, so I'm hesitant, and for me this is more like there's something. It's opening a bud. 
like a butt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good things to happen. So I hand over to the two ladies <laughs> in San Diego as well. Oh, where are you? Or are you in, in New York? No, no, we're in San Diego. So thank you, Gertrude. Yeah, it's great to start the new year with all of you. Um, Beatrice was... Um, Beatrice has been trying to field the many um, offers from her countless friends and suitors up and down the coast. <laughs> and so she was, she went off on a, what was going to be a major trip this week um, and then suddenly realized she was too tired. So a friend of hers who was on the list, um, but I guess didn't get an actual appointment <laughs> offered to drive her down from LA to San Diego in the middle of the night last night to bring her home so she could sleep in her own bed and um, be here this morning. So um, I haven't seen her for a couple of days, so I'll be interested to hear what she says <laughs> about the new year. Um, she's glowering at me. Um, I have started my new year. Um, I had a really exciting experience, which I'll share very briefly, which was that um, there, there's a place here in Northern California called Spirit Rock, which is um, a Buddhist uh, retreat center. And it's kind of been my mainstay throughout the pandemic. Um, I can't even remember now how I discovered it, but it's, I haven't been there in person yet. But the, the most um, sort of revered elder teacher there, um, she lives in San Francisco. Her name is Sylvia Borstein and she's 85. And she's just delightful. She's like the grandmother that you always wanted to have. She laughs constantly and she's very um, sort of good natured. And she has that kind of incisive Jewish wit and um, intelligence that keeps you on your toes. Um, she's really wonderful. Anyway, she every year, apparently for the last 30 years on New Year's Day, she's given a, um, a kind of three, a three hour kind of um, <clears throat> launching the new year retreat. And she, because of COVID this year, she could only invite a few people in person. And she actually invited me, um, which is amazing because I've never even met her. And then it turned out that with the new variant, the whole thing went online anyway, um, which is probably a good thing because uh, just keeping track of Beatrice has been enough for my holiday season, <laughs> let alone driving up into the wilds of Northern California. Um, anyway, there were four women there one taught, um, it, it, one is a, is a very, they're, they're all very big in their field here in, in America anyway. Um, one is a yoga and meditation movement teacher. Um, uh, one is a composer and a drummer and a rap musician. And I mean, she, she lo doesn't look very young, but she's, she's like a teenager in terms of her energy and her um, she makes up these rap songs. Um, one is a cellist in the San Francisco Symphony. And then there's Sylvia. And they've apparently all been friends for years. And so they're kind of a, they're a group that I guess has been doing these New Year's events. And I, on New Year's Eve, I had realized that in making my resolutions that there were four things that I really care about that I have neglected completely and that I want to um, be sure that I do regularly this year. And the four things I wanted that I thought about, this is the night before, mind you, um, is Tai Chi, which I really love, but I never seem to do it unless I'm in a class. And with COVID, it went by the wayside totally. Um, meditation, which I'm still scrambling to do. I can do it very well if I'm seated in a group of people that won't let me get up and jump around and do the dishes and do the laundry. Um, tap dancing, which of course, as you know, is my fire in the belly. So you can get up and jump around. So I can get up and jump around, right. And um, the violin, which of course is not only my passion, but it's supposed to be my profession. So <laughs> that's because of COVID, you know, I've neglected that too. Anyway, the miracle was in this retreat, and I didn't anticipate it, is that hearing all these women share, they each shared about their spiritual journey, but also their um, professional journey, like what led them to do what they do professionally. 
And it was very, they were all very eloquent and passionate and inspired. And I realized as I was listening to them, they, these four women represented my four resolutions. And so at the very end, when there was time to share, um, there were like 400 people on the call, but I put my hand up right away. <laughs> And I shared with them this kind of synchron, this amazing synchronicity um, that they embodied my four resolutions. Um, and so I felt really confirmed and affirmed in that. And it was just, I don't know, I'm still sort of glowing from it. And um, I, I've been sort of scrambling to do them. It's, we're only in the third day and I'm already like, <laughs> like doing, tap dancing and playing the violin and meditating, doing Tai Chi, like all in the space of like an hour <laughs> before I go to bed to make sure I <laughs> achieved my goals. But, um, but this morning I woke up an hour earlier and, um, and did a, a meditation session and Tai Chi at the same time. So that was, that was very efficient. <laughs> um, but uh, Beatrice was, is, well, now I'm going to hand over to you if um, I told Beatrice, Monia, I told Beatrice, I, I was catching her up um, on how you all shared so far. And I said, I said, Monia is grumpy, but she had eggs Benedict. And Beatrice said, oh, because <laughs> that's her favorite. So, <laughs> okay, so I'll hand over to Beatrice. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm exceptionally tired. Actually, I'm not feeling that tired, but I should be exceptionally tired because I did not sleep enough last night um came came home very late from LA she won't but even tell me how late <laughs> it's better nobody knows <laughs> um let's see my new year's um new year's eve I went for a walk well new year's eve actually new year's eve morning I took a movement class with a with a teacher of mine um who who has a, she's an expert in, in uh, Laban movement analysis and Bartenia fundamentals and all these different um, forms of breaking down um, movement into kind of the essential elements um, and looking, so also looking at movement from development, a developmental perspective. So starting with how how babies learn to move there's a kind of sequence of events of movement um, in terms of which parts of their body are connecting to which parts and um and bartenia fundamentals extrapolate from that and then they create a movement series based on that sequence so you start with you know the core distal and then the actually i think there's one before core distal but anyway um so that's her expertise. So she led a class on New Year's Eve morning. Well, it was afternoon in New York, but it was morning for me. Um, with some reflections of what we want to uh, let go of or pick up in the new year, and then a, a long movement segment, uh, including some improvisation at the end. And I didn't even tell you this. Um, but I couldn't, at some point I couldn't do, I couldn't do the movement segment because I was in tears. <gasps> and I think it's because, well, I think it's because I've been, I've been dancing again, but I, when I came to San Diego, I stopped dancing and I think things got bottled up. And then when I moved again, it, it opened it up again. But I think it also, there was, I was feeling the significance of the last day of the year and that this year, three, last year, not this year, <laughs> keep saying that, three, don't stare at me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can look at the computer. This is weird to have a face right here. <laughs> um, last year, three very uh, important and wonderful and uh, I don't know how else to describe them. Uh, women in our life died. And even though their deaths were not right close together, their funerals were all within a month of each other. Um, and I don't really think I've taken any time to sit with that. Um, 
So that was bubbling up for me too. Anyway, so that was the beginning of, of, of the last day of the year. And I also hadn't slept enough, which, you know, I'm learning that sleep is important. <laughs> and, and I was feeling very overwhelmed by everything. And my mother sent me to bed, <laughs> take a long nap. And, and then I woke up and felt suddenly like a real person and so much better and went for a walk to the beach uh, with a friend. And we saw the most glory, when we got to the beach, it was all cloudy, but there was a sunbeam coming out of the clouds. It, was, it totally looked, you know, like a, the magical, magical heaven or kingdom, you know, shining down. And it just got more and more beautiful um, over the course of the evening and the ocean waves were crashing and, and, I don't know, suddenly I felt like it's all, it was kind of a renewal and that this was gonna be a beautiful, the sun was gonna come out from the clouds for the new year. Um, and sure enough, also it's been, it was raining all of last week and the sun has come out for the new year. So um, this is a long check-in. Anyway, that was, I, I, I'm feeling hopeful for the new year and I got to spend some time the last few days with, with really dear friends and, um, talking about our new year's intentions and catching up and um just being together and that's been really lovely and i i have a calm calm hopeful uh view of the new year and and one of my big my big resolution not resolution but my big intention is to rest more um so that's we'll see how that goes <laughs> once i get back to new york on friday but um I will, it's everybody, I guess we pass to, to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I can check in a little bit. For me, uh, New Year's Eve, as was like always, I went to bed at 11 o'clock because I cannot wait until midnight. But for sure, I was woken up by such a noise. And then I went out, it was still quite warm. Uh, so in my nightdress, it was not too cold. And I saw everywhere like crazy this year, the, the fireworks were going really like, and long, 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 long. But yeah, and then the, the next day it was, was nice. And I enjoyed these days between Christmas and now because I was more or less alone. And I, um, I met some people uh, on, online, like Christine, also my uh, Swedish friend here uh, in, in life. And um, I enjoy to go deeper, for instance, into meditation and do more calm things, allow myself not to do anything and not to all the time have to look uh, in the internet and look what it is about. Just And I watched uh, concerts, uh, nice concerts and, yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, uh, tomorrow, the family will be back. The other people are back too, who are planning this uh, living community. And we are very engaged in trying to figure that out, how to do that and to find people who want to participate and who have a little bit of money so that we can buy a, a place, a part of mine. And uh, yeah, we will see how that goes on. And I'm quite hopeful that something will happen this year. And as a topic, I thought I hear New Year's resolution and intention and things like that. And as we know, we normally don't maintain our intentions. And so I thought we could talk about what are our dreams, not intentions, but dreams. What would be the best thing what, what could happen this year? Are you agreeing on that? So who, who has an idea already very clear, like an image in front of her eyes? Please start with sharing. Um, you may be familiar with the custom that the dreams you have uh, from 25th of December to the 6th of January will be fulfilled in the next year in the next year each month so i dreamt <laughs> i dreamt that first of all i found it uh, a community who produced operas 
uh, everything about operas, uh, the, the singers, the musicians, the composers. So it was in such a detailed dream uh, and uh, sort of I managed the whole thing. And then the, the next night I dreamt that I was a member of a rock band. And uh, yeah, and there were so many uh, viewers and uh, I wasn't sure whether they would all fit into the theater, but then I thought it's not my circus, it's not my problem, somebody else will take care of that. So I'm trying to really remember my dreams, the dreams I have every night until the 6th of January. And uh, it's amazing how, uh, um, because I have no intention at all uh, to get into any uh, activity that will take up all my time because I still have this feeling that I'm, as I told you, my recent project is how to be aware in the bardo after you've died. And that is a lot of work, but nevertheless, a part of me wants to be a, a member of a rock band. And I want to, because uh, producing an opera is an amazing way of, uh, yeah, to provide uh, people, first of all, with something that really they care for. And then, um, yeah, it's working places. So and it's amazing if you just think of what goes into an opera production. And of course, in, in Vienna, we had as usual for New Year's, uh, the Fledermaus, the bat. And now they closed down because uh, some of them had got COVID and so they won't uh, produce until January uh, 10th, I believe. Of uh, six, but it's it's uh, it's really difficult right now for culture and the arts to survive somehow. That's really difficult. And Austria is famous for being a cultural uh, country, but right now we are sort of reduced and reduced and reduced. Maybe that gets me grumpy too. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, what what opera did you dream of? Can can I play no, 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 a, no. a role of it? I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just to set up uh, the production of uh, how do, how do it, there was no the opera opera still has to be composed because ah. I've also a comp I had a composer's class and then I had an accountant and a doctor and uh, wig makers and everything so it's uh, it's amazing how I never thought about that before but the, that are my dreams. Uh, as such, I have no dreams and no intentions. I just go from one day to the next, actually from one moment to the next right now. And that's also unusual for me because usually I had lots of plans, but maybe it's just my age. <laughs> okay, I pass on to whoever feels full of dreams and wants to share them. Um, I, uh, I don't know that I've conceptualized uh, what my dreams are, but I think that's an intriguing question. So, I mean, I don't have an intellectual idea. So I'll just say, I would hope that I would just follow my heart a little bit more. And because I think that's a little clearer to me rather than trying to figure it out in my head because that gets pretty, pretty muddy and pretty confused <laughs> quickly. So my heart would tell me to spend more time uh, with music and um, both playing music, listening to music and dancing. So all those three things, and, and just that's for my own pure enjoyment. Um, that would probably be my first dream is to really spend more time doing that 
maybe on a daily basis. Maybe I should skip meditation and dance instead. I don't know. Maybe I'll try that. Um, and I think really the other thing that um, I haven't, that hasn't been fulfilled um, this past year is spending more time with people in person. I don't know that I have much control over that because I'm only half of the equation. And even if I want to, or I'm willing to meet with people in person, a lot of people don't wanna do that. But um, that would be another yearning, something that I dream for. And I don't feel like I can necessarily make that a reality on my own, but can dream about it. Um, yeah, I think those are what my dreams are for, for the next year. I'm Honestly, it's very interesting being in a Zoom square with another person. <laughs> um, she saw me unmute earlier and now is prompting me. Come back, come back. Um, uh, I was gonna say, what was I gonna say? No, I, I, I can't remember my my actual dreams, and I, I, I wish I'd known. I wish I'd known about that, Monia. I would have, I would have paid closer attention. But next year, maybe I'll remember to pay more closer attention. And there's one more, one more night. No, there's a few more nights. Maybe I'll pay attention Thanks. when I have a night. <laughs> um, if you ever get to bed. But I. I think something about what I what I dream about is is I want to be sharing more of what I personally have to offer creatively, uh, well, mostly creatively, but also compassionately, and and in terms of grief work or in terms of holding space for other people or in terms of teaching or something. I I think I my dream is that I get to a place where at least. Maybe the entire year isn't about that, but it, that there's some significant moments, at least, where I get to share my own work. Because I think last year, while I did do some of that, last year was a lot more about other people um, in terms of, of how, what kind of energy I was putting out in the world, with the exception of the two weeks in Europe that felt very, that was about finding my roots. but. Um, and there's some practical ways that it's, it's, it's already, I mean, I got asked to be a guest lecturer for one class in, I believe, April at NYU by one of my old, uh, a director that I worked for uh, last year. Um, so maybe I can do more things like that and create more things. Um, yeah, but that's, that's what comes to mind at the moment, but I'm going to pay attention to my dreams. In the next few days, <laughs> think of Monia. I, I, Monia, I want you to produce an opera. I think it's fabulous. <laughs> it's so specific. It's so great. <laughs> uh, I wish we had some time to talk because today I was thinking about you very hard. And maybe um, we could just add uh, some time, uh, three minutes after we finish this, because it's, it's really important. Yeah. Okay. I hope you found a husband for her, Monia. <laughs> Christine uh, East, you are unmuted. Does it mean you want to talk next? Because normally that's the, the sign when we are unmuted, it means uh, I would like to, to talk. But you oh. can, I mean, if you want to. Yeah, no, I've, I've just left it be that way. I apologize for the couple of times. Of course, they came between 12 and 1 to fix the tree. <laughs> I, was, I was hearing the hammer outside. I went, uh-huh. OK, but I want to make sure they're doing it the way I want it to be done. And the right tree, maybe, <laughs> also, no? No, no, it was pretty <laughs> obvious when it was lying on the ground. <laughs> That is your dream for the new year is to have your tree back. Yeah, that may may she survive, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And there were some other things that he wanted to look at, a creative project that 
is that size. So I took a few more, more moments for that. Um, my dream, um, I guess my dream, I thought about it this morning. I like whenever I'm doing any kind of facilitating, I like to summarize it with some kind of a visual. And so I grabbed that, this one earlier today. Can you see that? Am I holding it in a way that you can see it? You know, it says attention on one side and the word of choices next to it. I'm not hearing a yes, so you don't see it? Yes, we saw it, but you didn't see us. We said we all nodded. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> That would make sense. I'm not like, <laughs> do you see it? Do you see it? So this basically is something that I've had in my head for decades, but I haven't necessarily had it in my heart. That the only thing we really have control over is where we put our attention. And I've often said that in everything that I've done with trainings, whether it's with my students or in facilitating retreats and workshops and the only thing we really have control over consciously is our attention so that means that's the importance that whatever we're paying attention to those are going to be the choices that we have to make so i really want to live from that because it for me the example has been when i see my clients in fear that's where their attention is therefore those that creates their choices but if I'm in nature and I'm hiking and there are tons of opportunities for that around here, uh, and I just feel pretty much my attention is just with being one with nature, then those end up being my choices of actually feeling awe, being in awe in the moment. And the neuroscientists are telling us that when we're in a state of awe, not when we are in a state of awe, we are creating instant brain plasticity which is a lovely thought. I don't necessarily have to be hiking <laughs> or lifting weights to uh, get a more plastic brain. I'd like to do that and also do, you know, experiences that allow us just to experience the awe of the moment. But that depends on what we're paying attention to. If, we're looking, if I'm looking for what's wrong in a moment or what's not right in a moment, or what's not right in me, then the choices that I make emerge from my attention. So it's, it's maybe that's kind of abstract, but I've tried to make it visceral so I can feel that my attention is open to love and compassion and gratitude. And if my attention's on those um, states of being then I experience the Buddhist term loving kindness. And that's to myself and to others. So that's my dream this year is to, to come from those places. So it, the exact experiences don't matter so much as long as those states of being are holding me. And, um, and then they're there to be able to offer to others too, if that's something that I'm holding. As we all know, we infinitely influence each other. So yeah, those would be, thank you. Yeah, I'm sometimes shy to talk about myself, but the fact that I was unmuted <laughs> seems to have created that opportunity. So thank you. Next time I wanna be shy, I'll make sure I'm on mute. <laughs> Yeah. Christine, you gave me the, the word attention. What I, my dream is to be more able to control my attention. You know, I am um, experienced a lot on, let's say, on the inside level lately with heart opening uh, exercises and just concentrate on, on, on the heart and feeling it, you know, on the heart chakra also. And I realized how often I go away with the attention. So what I also am learning, and I hope I will learn this this year, to be more forgiving for, for the 
errors, let's say, or for the failures, instead of saying, you should blah, 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 which was my normal way of doing a uh, time ago. It's better now, but I'm still not, not there where I can just accept that I'm not perfect, you know? So, you know, from Enneagram, perfect would be my, the one uh, going there. So it should not be too bad if I went there, but I think it's the way of wanting to be perfect, which is not the right. Um, I feel that's not the right thing. And I really would like to go deeper in, in the inner world and experience more. Yeah, you, I, I call it also awe. There are moments of awe which are not spectacular, but it's just this moment when you feel that you are there, you know, and then how nice, and then trying to come back. And in the outside world, my dream would be to really have the people around me I connect well with and with whom I want to create my, my future. The, let's say the third or fourth half of life I would uh, uh, spend with these people. And it seems that that I have found some, but it's, you know, how the constellation will be and where on this, and all these things. You cannot really plan it. And I'm also learning to give it over to the universe. What will mm -hmm. happen happens, you know, there are so many things which, uh, might go this way or Mark might go the other way, but that's not not so much bothering me anymore. I think at the end, it will be okay. It will be right. And yeah, this is my dream that at the end it's really right and it's uh, um, uh, satisfying the the solution we have found together and who will still show up. That's also so amazing. The many people who have shown up lately. Yeah, it's the, the universe is moving. I have the impression and I'm happy to observe it moving and to receive whatever it can or wants to give to me and to the people around me and to the world, by the way. So that's my, my dream. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. It sounds like your intuition is thriving <laughs> or is quite quite energized. I hope so. <laughs> so we, we have still Hanely and Gertrude and Victoria. What are your big dreams? Um, I think I mentioned this before at a previous meeting, but I'm not sure. Um, last year, I came up with a name. I live on, on Summit Drive, and I'm on, living on top of not exactly a mountain, but here in it's California. It's not a mountain at all. It's a hill. <laughs> it counts as a mountain in California. Um, <laughs> but my address is Summit Drive, and I'm on the summit of the summit, and I can see like six six um what is ranges thank you ranges of mountains um from my window i'm looking at them right now on a clear day so i came up with this idea mountaintop sangha no mountaintop, mountaintop summit. summit oh that's right we had a whole summit sangha i also have sangha summit sangha or sangha summit anyway um the the um urls the the website website domain. thank you um because my dream, and I hope all of you will participate in this. Um, in fact, I'm expecting you all to participate in this, is to, what I noticed during the whole pandemic is that there's this plethora of opportunities to learn all kinds of modalities from, from you know, the most scientific sort of neuroscience, you know, neurons that, wired, wire, fire together, wire together and all that kind of thing. The whole range from that to the most sort of out there new age kind of explorations of um, shamanistic rituals and I don't know, whatever nature. Um, 
there, there's this enormous range of opportunities that the pandemic has brought sort of essentially into our homes and into our lives. And we can choose. It's like a, it's like a um, buffet of possibilities. But what I've noticed um, again and again and again and again is that the people who seek out those things, those communities and those um, and new ways of learning and new modalities, a lot of them are really suffering deeply. Um, they're in a lot of pain. And um, because of the way these things are constructed, they a lot of them are sort of go by the wayside. And I've even encountered people this is like through the chat, for example, of like a webinar or a crowdcast event. I, I've actually encountered people who were like suicidal and they're just reaching, they want an answer. They want someone to help them. And they're people, of course, the pandemic made it worse. That, the, that these, you know, a lot of people have no family. They have no friends. They're, they're introverts. And the pandemic just heightened these, um, this sense of isolation. So this is my dream. And I, I still am trying to figure out how to make it work. I was going to launch it on New Year's Day symbolically, but needless to say that hasn't happened yet. Um, I want to create a platform where I can bring to bear everything I have, literally, like creatively, artistically, musically, art historically, you, you name it, Spiritual. spiritually. And then everything I've learned in the course of the pandemic, so new things I've studied, Buddhism, um, all kinds of new psychology things. I mean, Christine, um, Christine East <laughs> has been one of my mentors, um, the Enneagram, um, not as an expert, but just as a person, just as a human being who's open, who's exploring. And then I'm just, I have so much love and compassion and empathy that I'm just drowning in it. And so that's, that's the primal um, force of energy that, that is sort of leading to this dream that I want to find a way that I can um, welcome people who, who do get lost in the shuffle. These people that I keep running into, I mean, I've reached out to countless people um, just in that format of like, um, it's a chat and somebody's just reaching out in desperation, you know, whatever, my son just committed suicide, I'm in desperate need, I'm in grief, what can I do? And, you know, in these things with their, their three or 400 people on a call, obviously, the, the presenter can't be monitoring all these things and addressing them. Um, and anyway, I shared this with one of the major, um, David Tree Levin, who, whom I, by, by the way, highly recommend. Um, he's, he founded this um, whole movement called Trauma Sensitive Mindfulness, which I think is really, really crucial. He's a psychologist um, from Canada. And um, I actually was able to exchange with him on a call a few weeks ago, and I shared this dream with him, he's a big, you know, I mean, he's the real deal. He's an expert and he's known worldwide. And he said, um, he said, that's such a beautiful thing. He said, I've noticed that too. And he said, it, it is a, it is a space that needs, needs, someone needs to fill it and be there for these people. And he said, um, you may be eaten alive. And I said, I I'm ready to be eaten alive. Like, this is my time. Like, I, if, if, if it takes being eaten alive to help even a few people, then, um, it's, it's worthwhile. So anyway, I'm talking way too much. That was like the whole, but, um, wait, oh, Hanalee. Oh yes, absolutely. Well, I need, I need, um, I need all your help and, um, I don't want you to be eaten alive unless you want to jump into the <laughs> jump into the pit with me, but, um, but it's a real dream. And I'm very, I'm, I'm realizing that maybe also cause I lost my family. Um, and I've lost so many friends. Well, I've lost so many friends to death. I lost my family due to, um, a neurosis in my family, <laughs> bad genes. Um, but I have so much love to give. It's kind of like the, the sound of music, which I'm sure, um, Monia <laughs> probably hates just the mention of it, but <laughs> A dream that will need all the love you can give every day of your life for as long as you live. So that's uh, Climb Every Mountain with the, the Mother Superior. Maybe your opera will have something like that in it, Monia. Okay, anyway, I hope you'll all join me to the degree that you share this dream. And, um, and that's, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Thank you.
I have a similar dream, but not so much with trauma people because I don't feel um, able to handle these things. But sharing what I have learned in life with, with young people. I really would like, as I do a little bit, play the grandmother who is not the real grandmother, so it's not all the family stuff in between, but can give the, let's say, the wisdom, give over to, to younger kids. So it's something like that. I'm just absolutely stunned by the synchronicity every time we come together. Because Monia, when you started, um, my, I'm named after a very famous opera singer, South African opera singer, who had to leave South Africa to go to Europe to find her fame and to share her gift with the world in Vienna, of all places. And I actually dreamt about her this past few days. And she was telling me it's time to step up, to step up onto the stage. So I just got the shivers when you spoke about it. And the rock star part as well. <laughs> and but every all of you, every you all have said something that's part of what I'm dreaming of. The all um, and Victoria, what you just spoke about in terms of also me not on the trauma side, but we are busy developing an app that will link people together to people who can help them or to explore other possibilities, but to begin to live in a way of flow. And that's why I wanted to get to Switzerland so desperately in the last two years. And now the door seems to that we may be able to travel, that I can get with my technology partner who's living in Switzerland, that we can finish this because we both are so, all the blueprints for it's there. It's just he needs to do the technology side and he can't do it without me being with him. And it will link into so many different networks and link people together. And yeah, it's, it's also going to on so different, many different levels in terms of also in organizations, we're introducing an all threat, which is horizontal. So it's not a division like HR and you know, uh, finance and the likes. It's a threat that runs through organizations and you are, the people who work, sort of, who work together in the organization, co-create in the organization, they get the opportunity to these traumas, to heal these traumas, to also work on personal development, spiritual development, because our lives are not separated in different silos. We are a total human being. So we're launching that this year as well. We're launching many things this year, but I was just stunned by all that you all said, and it just comes back to me that the time is right now to enter the flow and to be the orchestrator of all these synchronicities. And that's what it's all about. It's not living a, li a linear life anymore from A to B, but it's from our center out into the world. And then the ripples is just rippling out into the world, whatever we presence, whatever we speak, whatever we contribute, whatever we co-create. So my wish and my dream for humanity, for all of us is, such a life where all can flourish, but that we can send shift into those realities because we have so much wisdom in this world, but it's not embodied. The, the people have incredible dreams and one of my gifts is to share how people send shift into a future self and to shift in from a physicality point of view, a mental, emotional and spiritual point of view and the energetic point of view to send shift into that reality, to feel it deeply in ourselves that we can make these imprints in the world. And because it brings so much joy when we physically experience our dreams and our intentions and whatever we want to bring to the world in a very physical way here right now. And I'm always, that sounds, you, you have me in tears tonight because it's like <laughs> my soul and the universe is speaking out very out loud that it is time like my namesake, which I'm named after, that it's time to step up and not to hide anymore. And thank you for all of you. <laughs> I'm complete. Very interesting. I just wrote in the chat that a friend of mine who is now living, he's a 
a global citizen living in South Africa right now, uh, he, he created several <laughs> words and one of which was amazing. <laughs> And um, what you just shared, Hanali, this is very much resonating with me. It, it's, it's, um, there were two words that come up for me. This is one is health on, on all levels and freedom. And health is also, I told you about a very close person. Um, uh, yeah, just knowing that this year is a recovery year, so he will be healthy. Um, yeah, just the new, <laughs> new baby to arrive healthy safely in in this environment and um there yeah my personal the hell it's it's like the the whole i had a meditation just a few days ago and i could feel my whole ecosystem like my extended family <laughs> where you belong to is it's like yeah healthy on all levels the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, mental, um, yeah, expanding health. That's that's one part. And the other one, the freedom to be me, to the freedom to express myself. Not yeah, just for being able to share my gifts, which I was hiding. And, and so when you said it's time to step up and doing my WeFlow training, I, I said, I want to be unrecognizable. You are yeah. muted again, okay. Being in the world. Um, and that, that people are like welcome with everything not just a few parts of it in this in a sick in a yeah in silos so yeah so i cannot find so many nice words and you did honey but but i this to to embody what you know is true or to embody your dream to embody the vision, not that it's in La La Land, but here in this world. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and for me, becoming a new grandmother, I have to already, but it, it, it has also something to do with future that we are responsible to, to make a difference right now so they can live in a better future than we presented them till now. So, so there is some responsibility. So I feel the responsibility without the weight. It's, but it's, it's like, yeah, it's us who created the mess. So <laughs> it's us to, to do something about it. Yeah. And I learned a lot about self-protectedness as, as my natural, like my natural way of inner erectedness and, and being there in the world and not being just knocked over by each and every one who has to say something about it. Yeah. So that's me. Thank Health you. and freedom. Okay, is there, you're muted. Did, did you want to say still something, Gertrude? Okay. Uh, 
Did we all have the chance to express our dreams? Is anybody not want to add something? And then I would suggest and ask you if any one of you can lead maybe a short ritual or a short meditation to consolidate our, our dreams, to, to, to birth it into the new year. I wonder if one of you with a wizard uh, ladies is able to, to guide something like that. Good, I'll try. Okay, good. <laughs> so I, I'm struck by how aspirational this group is, the big ideas and, and big heart and, and big dreams. So that was wonderful. So I would imagine all of us standing on a summit and just picture what that peak would be like. And we're scanning around, looking at each other and sharing that feeling with each other and just the world that lies ahead of us. Range after range of challenge and delight and opportunity in the, in the horizon. And as we are up on that summit, the clouds part and this beam of light shines down on us. And we're all pretty amazed because the rest of the sky is a little bit cloudy. And yet this clear beam is coming down and kind of um, energizing us <clears throat> and being very beautiful and also being very spiritual all at the same time. And we're all standing kind of in that glow. And then coming up to the summit is a conductor, you know, with the complete, it could, it's a woman conductor though, <laughs> in case you envisioned a man, <laughs> it's a woman conductor and she's got the, you know, tuxedo on with the tails and uh, the wand in her hand and she begins conducting. And we don't hear any music per se, but magically kind of each of us in our own heart or our own head or body, maybe in our bodies, we hear some kind of music and she continues to conduct us. And each of us has that kind of um, tingly feeling of something kind of moving through us and continuing outward into the world as this woman uh, enables the flow of music and energy and uh, knowledge and joy all to come through us. And um, then the beam of light goes away and we're left on the summit. And we all know that we will return there at another point and be together again. And, uh, we all look forward to that. Brilliant, Christine. I think I think you're the conductor. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it all together. You integrated everyone's dreams. So beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Meeting on the summit as we are doing now. We will meet again to another summit next in two weeks and may our dreams become true thank you everybody good night good day whatever you yeah. have thank you thank you Jennifer. we're gonna go in the kitchen and make eggs benedict for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> in honor of monia <laughs> Uh, I'd like just to talk to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I stop the recording. Yeah. Just a moment.